moving right along with this show and into the fourth topic, the AFC East running back rankings to continue on with the series. Last time I talked about the NFC North and now we can shift over to the AFC and looking at the New York Jets, the Dolphins, the Bills, and the Patriots and where they all rank this week on my rankings. Starting off with number four, I have the New England Patriots, really the main two guys, Ramondre Stevenson and Antonio Gibson coming over from the Washington Commanders. They had Ezekiel Elliott in their backfield last year, but he obviously re-signed with the Dallas Cowboys. So now you look to Ramondre Stevenson to be that bell cow for the Patriots. He missed five games last year, and in those five games missed, playing those 12 games, he recorded 619 yards, four touchdowns, not the best in the passing game as well, only 38 receptions for under 240 yards. So, you know, obviously the missed time doesn't help the statistics, and he has had um, better seasons than um, than he has had in 2023 before in his three seasons for Ramondre. Two years, he has played 12 games, and uh, the year that he did play all 17 games, he recorded that 1,000-yard season. So you'd want to get him as healthy as possible to be a more experienced and reliable weapon that you can use, especially when the offense is so young and you have so many high-powered offenses in that division that um, if you can control the game with the running game, it would definitely help out not only the offense, but your young quarterback potentially if uh, Drake may start at some point in this season. But then you look to the right and you have Antonio Gibson expected to play a decent role in the offense or at least in the backfield this coming 2024. He was signed in free agency this offseason, but not much better than that number two option uh, for the Patriots. A bit more finesse and a bit more involved in the passing game than Ramondre Stevenson would be, but the talent level i guess you could say really isn't there just compared to the other um players in this division you know i will get to them in just a second but when you compare them at the end of the conversation you would probably side with a few more other options not a bad number one option in Ramondre stevenson but i don't think the makeup of the team really helps it the versatility also in the passing game is a little bit lacking so you would hope to see a jump in that uh come 2024 but for right now the New England Patriots fill up that last spot in the running back rankings for the AFC East. And then you move on to the number three team, and this is where you have the New York Jets. Brees Hall, big fan of Brees Hall. Um, I like the development that I've seen. In the first year where he tore his ACL, he was on track to record a very impressive first year. Obviously, that gets canceled out because he got injured. Then in the second year, Aaron Rodgers obviously goes out, and you can't really see the full potential of what he could be. I know he put up some pretty uh, decent numbers. He had 223 carries, almost 1,000 yards, 76 receptions, and 591 receiving yards. And it is difficult to have production with only one running back at the end of the day last year. Michael Carter was there. You know, you had some guys rotate in and out, but nobody really to complement what Brees Hall was doing for this offense. Putting up very impressive numbers, but the offense, the team overall, the morale was down, and it wasn't really um, helping the team out too much, even though I believe he could be in a real conversation for the best and maybe most talented running back in this division. But where the New York Jets sort of falter for me in the rankings overall for running back groups is they just don't have a pretty reliable second option. They're probably second best option up until this point is the rookie that they drafted out of uh, Wisconsin, Braylon Allen. Again, running back coming in, very young at this point, and um, you don't really know what to expect out of him. You you know what Brees Hall is going to do. You know he could produce for you at a very high level like he did last year with no Aaron Rodgers. Now you get your quarterback in there. It's definitely going to be a massive help, but to sort of have somebody in there to give Brees Hall a little bit of a break and still produce in the passing game. I think it's asking a little bit too much out of Braylon Allen in his first year. And also the offensive line, up until right now through many camp and OTAs, they haven't had too many reps together. That's a massive thing for me to have this line be a cohesive unit. If you have pieces coming in and out, that's not really going to work. So the New York Jets have the talent in one running back, but the numbers, the depth there, and the versatility from the overall group is what sort of holds me back from putting them any uh, any higher on this list. But again, massive fan of Brees Hall. They have a good one in him. They just need a little bit more to help him out. And then you go to number two, and this is where it gets a little bit different for um, this list and what 
provides the running game for the Buffalo Bills, sliding in there in the number two overall spot. The number one running back is that man to your left, James Cook. The typical running back for them. Good development over his first couple of years there. 237 carries, over 1,000 yards as well. And in his first year and in his second year, a big improvement. The first 1,000-yard season recorded in 2023. In his two years, you know, you saw that massive improvement. The first year was a little bit dicey. Not too much production coming out of that spot. They had the passing game going for them, but... They needed that to complement them, and then in 2023, it sort of flipped, and he was very productive, but not too much coming from the other receivers other than Stephon Diggs and maybe a couple of the tight ends. And now you head into this year, and it is a little bit different because you have a pretty decent running game in terms of numbers and in terms of where they rank and stack up in the NFL And you look at some of the other options you have in Josh Allen. Why is he included in there? Well, he was their second leading rusher last season. Probably, again, um, projecting towards 2024. Not a bad thing, um, in my opinion, if you have a quarterback be your second leading rusher. And in saying that, I truly mean that the way Josh Allen is, his style of play. You can't have all quarterbacks do it, but the way... Uh, Josh Allen produces from the physical aspect and from the running game. I think it's all right to have him be more involved in the running game. I think you'd be doing a disservice to not take advantage of that. So Josh Allen being in there, doing a lot of creative things with your quarterback being able to run is certainly a weapon that they would love to use. And they also drafted Ray Davis to add a little bit more depth and power to James Cook's finesse and agility that they have in their number one running back. I would like to see a little bit more in the passing game. Only 44 receptions for 445 yards. Seventh in the t- in uh, total yards and uh, yards per game. So there is a little bit ways to go with this team. But they add a little bit something different that I think really propels them above the uh, New England Patriots and also the New York Jets. But Obviously, that leaves one team at the number one spot. The Miami Dolphins are the best running back group in the AFC East just because, you know, that speed, man, that speed absolutely kills and destroys opposing defenses. If you have one guy, you know, you have one guy you could sort of game plan for. You can expect what is going to happen in that play. You can anticipate it a little bit. But then once Raheem Mostert goes out, you could think you're going to have a break or could spot yourself a little bit there with a few um, plays to go until he comes back, but it isn't the case this time with Devon Achan there repping Raheem Mostert and coming in as his backup, and as a team, they were sixth in the NFL in total rushing yards, over 2,300 rushing yards for them, and also sixth in the NFL in yards per game, um, 135.8 rushing yards per game as well. Mostert had the best year of his career as a 32-year-old, A 1,000-yard season, led the NFL in total touchdowns with 21. And then you have Devon Achan as a rookie putting up 800 yards, eight touchdowns, three receiving touchdowns, and that's only his first year. You know, he's going to learn a lot more, and it's going to look a lot differently. The game's going to slow down so much for Achan in his second year that it's really going to help him and propel him to potentially have a 1,000-yard season. If you have two runners on your team to produce that, uh, quality and that level of production, you can only assume that the Dolphins are going to be a lot more balanced. They add a lot to this team as a whole, both of them coming out of the backfield. Being involved in the passing game as well could be, again, something that I would like to see a little bit more of, but they just have the raw, natural ability of being blazing fast and just running past a lot of people. You can't teach that. It's hard to game plan around that if you have two guys doing it. So the Dolphins, based on that and the production high level of efficiency you see from them is why I have them as my number one ranked team, um, running number one ranked running back group in the AFC East. Let me know what you guys think of my list. Let me think of the order, and let me think if you like, uh, let me know if you like Josh Allen being a prominent figure in the Bills running game. Some people love it, and I found it um, to be just a change of pace. I don't hate it, and just leave your thoughts in the live chat box or in the comments section afterwards, as always, but We will go to the last break of the show, and when we return, we're going to dive into the changes and the new trends we could be seeing around the kickoff rules changing as well, what Mike McDaniels had to say about it, and what Justin Tucker is doing this offseason to contribute more to special teams on the defensive side of the ball. Don't go 
anywhere. We'll be right back with the last segment. <laughs> 